Welcome aboard Biotruck Sailing. We're back after a quick trip home. We went to Florida for Thanksgiving, where I had a chance to try eFoil, which was fabulous and really fun. It does take a learning curve. There you go, lean forward, lean forward. Yeah, great job. We saw the devastation of the recent hurricane. And then we flew to Boston to experience some cold weather again. And then back to our boat in Tahiti. We had left our boat at a mooring and we had a chance to test it out with this storm that blew in a few days before we left. It gave us a lot of confidence that our boat would be safe at the mooring. I want to give a shout out to all of those who have checked out the Alliance to Cure website. I know it's helped at least one family. Awareness of this disease will help prevent the consequences of brain bleeds. One in 500 of us have a cavernona lesion silently lurking in our brain. On with the show and enjoy. For centuries, captains of sailing ships have chosen a course where the winds are predicted to blow in the direction of travel. These are the trade wind routes, and today, cruising sailboats follow these same routes to sail with the trade winds. In our last video, we showed that we had spent some time in Papiti, the largest town in French Polynesia, and that we moved Biotrack to a mooring in preparation for a trip home for American Thanksgiving. Tahiti is south of the equator, which means that in November, we are moving into the summer in this area of the world. Anyone living in a tropical or subtropical region of the world knows that summer generally means there's a risk of violent storms and it's hurricane season. The winter months are generally the safest months for sailors who want to avoid hurricanes or cyclones as they're called in the Eastern Pacific. By now, most of the boats that are going to travel south to avoid cyclones have already sailed to New Zealand. We've decided we'd like to stay in the warm waters and join up with the Gliwo Rally a little bit later next spring. Cyclones in French Polynesia are quite rare and they've never happened in the Marquises. Our plan was to leave our boat on the airport mooring across from the airport while we traveled home and then when we returned to sail back to the Tuamotos and then up towards the equator at the Marquesa Islands. We are Pierre, Tiller and Lisa. Subscribing to our channel will help us bring awareness for cerebral cavernous malformations and you can join us in our sailing adventures. Tropical storms, great violence can occur at any time of the year. And in the region around Papiti, the weather becomes a little bit more unstable in the summer period. You looking at the wind speed, Pierre? Hi, wind speed. You can't even see the boat today, so. Somebody out on the bow of the boat fixing something over there, you see that? Yeah, we're watching our position because we're on a mooring, but we're just fine.
a boat moored near us. Can't really see it. It's there. And we're turning differently than they are because we're a catamaran and they're a monohull. And Tiller just chilling out. Okay, Tiller. what it looked like on Jamala, an Amos Super Maramu that was in the same anchorage they gave us this film. Oh, that's the same anchor tree we had problems before. And that's where Yannick is. So we just heard on the VHF that two, two boats have gotten loose in the little bay by the Intercontinental. They're on the rocks. Oh, they're on the rocks? Yikes. Well, I just wish it would stop. It's exciting when it lasts two minutes, but it's not so exciting when it keeps just going on and so on and on. It's a good test for our anchorage. I'm very, uh, very happy to be here when this happens. It's really Jean Baudin with the tanks. Uh, just check if the cement won't move at all. You're going to check if the cement won't move? Oh. When it's what? finished? Yeah, I'll go down. With, with scuba tanks? Yeah. Kara's getting ready to go to the bow and check things out. looks like where all the boats are in trouble, at least in better times. The boats here are anchored, not on moorings. As you can see, they're packed in quite tightly. Affirmatif, trois voiliers. Tout bien noté. Tu 
three boats now. One's against the intercontinental cabins and a couple on the rocks. Yep. But you know, we're, we're far away. There's no way we can do anything. And there's actually, there's, there's, there's probably 30 boats in that anchorage. So there's people there that can help. Uh, we're a good mile away. here to say something about the Coast Guard. In the United States, their job is to rescue people whose lives are in danger, but not if the boat is simply in danger. Well, Tahiti doesn't have that much infrastructure, and there are no private companies, such as CETO, to come and rescue boats that are in danger. At least there is protected. I mean, there are no... There well, are they wouldn't have the same amount of waves that we have, would they, with the, no. this wind direction? No, not the waves, but the wind for sure. And with all, so many boats tied to get there, close together, if uh, the boat starts drifting onto the rocks or to the hotel. It's safe. It's safe, yeah. Yeah, we have two operations in cours. Is there a evolution since this time? Apparently, there's a Niki that's coming. I don't know if it's the captain or not. Let's see. Boats in that anchorage, so there's people there that can help. But a mile away, three boats on the rocks. There's nothing we can do. And it's a very busy anchorage. They're they're in there tight. So there's probably some boats bumping up. But we have a friend in there, so we might have to go over later and find out if everything's okay. She's on a, a big old boat. Um, yeah. Oh, it certainly looks like it's coming down now. We've only got winds of 31 knots. <laughs> Good morning. Fiona? Yes? How is it going out there? Oh, you're in the park. You're not at the boat. It turns out that our friend who was in the park took her dinghy and went with some of the other boats in the anchorage to rescue the boats on the rock. And they were able to save all those boats on the rocks. The wind's only at 31 knots, so time for coffee. And just like that, the storm was over and the anchorage started to look normal again. The wind switched back to the southeast. The boats all turned around the other way and get on with our day because it was just after seven o'clock in the morning. So now that the storm's over, we can see that uh, the brown water that came out from the river is heading this way. It's important to know that we did not go through that storm wondering if the mooring would hold. When we first arrived, Pierre and I put on our scuba gear and checked out the mooring. It's anchored to a huge cement block and all the tackle is new. For the storm, we confirmed that the block had not moved. After the storm, I got in the dinghy to take the dog for a walk and also to go to the anchorage where the boats had dragged and make sure that our friends were okay. En route, we could see another boat that had dragged onto a reef. I'm taking a boat to the park and I see a, a boat that sank on a reef. Probably one that was uh, left unattended. So there it is. On towards the Intercontinental Hotel, you can see how muddy the water is. One of the boats warned us that, because uh, this is runoff for the rivers, that there's a lot of uh, staph infections of people who would swim in this water. So that's the anchorage that's always problematic in the storm, right by the Intercontinental. Once we arrived in the bay, we found out that the two boats that had dragged on the rocks had been saved and the one that had bashed into the bungalows at the Intercontinental had also been saved. So all was well in the bay. Several days later, the water was clear again, we could swim again, and then one morning, we had a desperate message from a friend. Eric is a solo sailor on an Outremer 4X called Falcon. 
He was docked across from us in Papiti Marina and we've seen him in various ports. He had left for the Tuamotos and both engines conked out, so he sent us a message by satellite saying that he was on his way back to the marina and would need some help to get through the pass since there was no wind and he didn't want to be blown onto the reef. We first called each marina, Papiti Marina and Taina Marina, to see if there might be a tow boat or any boat that was able to go out to sea to help tow him in. But no luck, they don't offer those services. I also called a super yacht that was in port, but they said they couldn't help because their larger tender had not been launched. So we recruited some friends, we headed into the town, and we followed where he was on AIS on our telephone. The winds had completely died and he was going very slow, so we had a drink while we waited. We're in Papiti, we're waiting for our friend Eric, and he called us, actually he texted us with his satellite saying he needs help, he's lost both engines, uh, but the wind has died and he's far out, we're worried he won't get here before dark, but this is what we do while we wait. It's getting late and the wind has died and we, we're trying to figure out what to advise him to do. Right? So some choices are we could call the super yacht over there that has a bigger dinghy because we can't go out to sea in our dinghy. Uh, if he's really in trouble, he can call the Vigi Pepiti, which hopefully could have some solutions. So that's the port control, VHF. We've called the two marinas, they can't help out. Uh, there's no trouble to us here in Tahiti. As Falcon approached the pass, we headed out to help. position inside the two hulls to have better control of the boat, which will be needed when we reach the marina. Okay, so they've landed safely and uh, yeah, everyone's having the debriefing discussion, so here's what's going on. Always nice to be back on board. We've really enjoyed being at the mooring just off the airport. We've gotten to know some of the other people in the Anchorage. So it's to new friends and good friends. And Manuya. 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 We have many beautiful sunsets with Moria in the backdrop. Pierre can wing foil with some of the people who are practicing that as well, with beautiful scenery. It's so convenient to go by dinghy to Tahiti or to a nice restaurant at the marina. And of course, we're always keeping an eye on the weather. Can you blow up Tahiti? Yeah, it is. 
Then you're all this is red. With the 50 knots of wind and the storm that we had while we were on the mooring, we know that we had left Biotrack in a safe place for our quick trip home. Tahiti is such a beautiful island, much to do in the water and also hiking. Look at these beautiful mountains from the air. But upon our return, we'll be leaving Tahiti and going back to the Tuamotos where we'll spend Christmas and then we'll be off to the Marquises closer to the equator so we won't have to worry so much about bad weather. And please do make sure to check out the Alliance to Cure. We're helping the Alliance to Cure bring awareness about cavernous malformations because they can happen spontaneously and then they can spontaneously bleed. And often people are surprised because they've never heard about this. It's important to know if you've been diagnosed with one from an MRI so that you can get specialist help to understand what is the best treatment strategy. Because brains shouldn't bleed. To see a video about when things go wrong on a boat, check out this video. Or see this one about sailing in the Tuamotos. Please subscribe and until next time.